so on the first problem, the 3a plus 7 equals negative 2, uh, what are we going to start with? What are we going to do first? Just, uh, line of equality. Line of equality and circle of variables. So we draw that line of equality, uh, keep the left and right half separate so we can keep it organized and remember whatever we do on one side we have to do on the other and then we'll circle the variable because we want to get that a by itself. So to get the a by itself I'm going to have to get rid of the 3 and the 7. Which one should I get rid of first? Seven. The 7. And how would we do that? Seven. Subtract 7. So we subtract 7 on one side which means we have to subtract 7 on the other side and on the left side, when those sevens cancel, what does that leave? 3a. 3a. On the right side, negative 2 minus 7. They're both negative, so they're going to combine and get negative, negative 9. And what else do I need to finish this step? Uh, no, to finish this step. I'm not done with that step. I need an equal sign on the line of equality, right? So when I do each step, I need to make sure that I finish the step by writing a new equation. So that gives us an equal sign on the line of equality there. All right, now to get the a by itself, I have to divide. divide by 3. So I divide by 3 on both sides. On the left side, those 3s cancel, leaving what? A. And on the right side, negative 9 divided by 3 is? Negative 3. Negative three. <laughs> All right. Uh, the second one here, we want to get that b by itself. So we'll circle that. We'll draw our line of equality. And there's actually three things we have to get rid of here. We have to get rid of the 3 with the b, the minus 4, and the divided by 7. So which one of those three things should we get rid of first? Seven. The 7. How are we going to get rid of the divided by 7? Multiply. multiply by 7. So we multiply by 7 on both sides. On the left side, those 7s cancel, leaving what? Okay, and on the right side? 14. Okay, and then equal sign on the line, so we've got a new equation. Uh, still have to get rid of two things, the 3 and the 4, so oh, which one do we do next? Four. Okay, and how do we get rid of the minus 4? Add 4. Alright, so we'll add 4 on both sides. On the left side, the 4 is cancel, leaving 3b. And on the right side, 14 plus 4 is 18. Alright, one more thing, we've got to get rid of that 3 by doing what? Divide by 3. So when those 3's cancel, we have b equals 6. Alright, this next one, a little trickier. Um, basically, what this equation means is we're looking for a number that we could replace c with. That if we put it in there, this equation is going to be true. So this one's pretty simple. Uh, the square root of some number is going to give us 7. All right, so first of all, what, what's the answer going to be? What do we take the square root of to get 7? What do you take the square root of to get 7? Root. We would take the square root of 49 to get 7. Um, so does anybody have any idea how we could solve this equation to get c equals 49? We know the answer is going to be 49, but how can we get that? Basically, we're trying to get rid of what to get the c by itself? We're trying to get rid of the square root. Anybody remember what the opposite of a square root is? Square. square. So if I want to get rid of the square root, I can square it. Well, what's the golden rule say? If I do something on one side, I have to do it on the other. So if I square the left side, I have to... Square the right side, so I'm going to square the 7 also. So on the left side, what's going to happen with the square root and the square? Cancel. They cancel. Those are gone. And what does that leave? C. C. And then on the right side, what is 7 squared, or 7 times 7? 49. 49. So we're really doing the same thing we were doing before. We're using inverse operations, but we're just adding a new inverse operation. The inverse of a square root is a square. So if we have a square root in the problem, we get rid of it by squaring. All right, now we can do something similar here in this problem. But to get the d by itself, I have two things I need to get rid of. I need to get rid of the square root, but I also need to get rid of the minus 3. Which one of those two things do you think I should get rid of first, the square root or the minus 3? Minus 3. Yeah, we should get rid of the minus 3. And the reason is the square root is just over the d. 
Since the square root is just over the d, I would have to get rid of this minus 3 before I can get rid of that square root. So how do I get rid of the minus 3? Add three. We'll add 3. So again, we're just doing the same thing we always do to solve equations. Uh, we're using inverse operations. In this case, the 3's cancel, and what does that leave? D. Not just d. Square root. The square root of d, right? So the square root didn't cancel out. So we have the square root of d equals 2 plus 3, which is 5. And now, just like the last one, I'm looking for the number that we take the square root of to get 5, which is, what do we take the square root of to get 5? The square root of 25 is 5, so how do I get that 25? How do I get rid of that square root? I square it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to square the square root, and if I square the left side, I have to square the right side. So those, the square and the square root cancel each other out, just like they did on the last one. So we get d all by itself on the left, and 5 squared, which means 5 times 5 is 25.